we had Mike McCarthy on Friday's program, and you could tell they were still in just uh, shock that Trevon Diggs uh, had just blown out his knee in practice yeah. out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. The stat that says everything you need to know about his value to the Dallas Cowboys, and I had, I had NFL research look it up, and this is uh, factual. The passer rating in his direction over the first two weeks of the season, quarterbacks who dared to target anybody that Trayvon Diggs was covering, which is Daniel Jones and Zach Wilson, and I understand you could sit here and say that speaks volumes in itself as to how low this number is, but it's very rare to see a cornerback with a passer rating against number of one. It was one. (laughs) And by the way, quarterbacks, when they dirt the ball to avoid a sack legally, you get a passer rating of almost 40. So, it's like the SATs. Like just, you, you, you sign just your, name, your name, right? Like 300 points. <laughs> one. <laughs> Trevon Diggs is one. So, to me, you could sit here and say, you know, it's excuse making, but that had to be quite the blow to get on the plane. And you saw CD Lamb had the number seven on his eye black underneath, I believe it was. Was he right eye? Was it a right eye? His right eye. Okay, yes. not left eye. <laughs> That's taken. Pull one out. RP. So, long story oh, short, is clearly this team misses him and are playing for him. And then what frequently befalls the Cowboys in past years that we did not see in the first two weeks Subway is that they have problems punching down. The people punching up at them normally land a blow in a significant fashion that causes the Cowboys to lose games that they quote-unquote should win. Now then, the Arizona Cardinals have proven, I think, through the first three weeks that they are most certainly not tanking. They're not watching USC games. Nope. And Kyler Murray's on the sideline, you know, psyching everyone up. So... The Cardinals have some players, and Josh Dobbs, I love this kid. I love what he stands for. I love that he's getting an opportunity in a row, not just, hey, Josh, we need to sign you off someone else's practice squad and throw you right in the midst of a must-do-or-die win game like, say, the Titans did last year against the Jaguars who were rampaging in the second half of the season. No, he's getting a shot, and he's he's getting better. James Conner is running the ball like always. And they made some nice plays early on to avoid Micah Parsons and yeah. and some wide open receivers. And then the Dallas Cowboys, I think, found out yesterday that they have uh, some red zone problems. One of five in the red zone yesterday for a touchdown. A couple field goals and interception. And... Turnover on downs, the dreaded turnover on downs. And that's the way you lose games on the road. And another issue I see from the Dallas offense that we were talking about on game day morning, even when they were winning. And uh, I know I did come on this show and say this could be their year, and it still could be. I mean, come on, it's just one game. Not but I, everybody else. But I get it. Over. I get it. That's that's that's. This is not called the everybody else show. What's it called? We know it. (laughs) The rich eyes. So bottom line is they have some issues. If you are going to take C.D. Lamb out of the game, who's going to beat you? Is it Brandon Cooks? I mean, Gallup had some nice catches. Is Rico Dowdle going to, you know, scare you? He did score yesterday. Pollard did get over 100 yards. They did have over 400 yards of offense. They did move it. They just couldn't put it in the end zone. And then the one time when they actually did go for it and not settle for the field goal, Dak threw the pick. And it was a bad one. It was just one of those ones that you can't pin on someone else whether they drop ball or tip ball. or It was just a place that you shouldn't have put it and, um, and threw the pick. This was Dak after the loss when he was told that everyone in the media had put them on a pedestal and they are Super Bowl worthy still. 
But this was Dak's response to that. Y'all put us on top of the world. Um, we knew we know who we are, um, and, and in that same sense, I'm sure the media got got what they wanted. Uh, for us, um, it hadn't been but one one undefeated team in this league um, ever, ever. So. Uh, yeah, it, it sucks. It's humbling. Um, but to say it's a wake up call, we, we knew we had a lot of adversity um, and we just just didn't get it done. And I think it just goes back to, to myself, the offense and, and the red zone. So, I mean, we get better at there. We win this game, but uh, we've, we've got to fix that area, period. That's it. That's it. And so who's going to who's going to you, you throw them 50 50 up to CD? I mean, I don't know. I mean, um, can the tight ends? Step up? I mean, what 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 can be done in the red zone? In this instance, they didn't have any answers. Execution. I guess so. Just play, play, better. play better. That's what Mooch says sometimes, and it play kind better. of drives me nuts. That's play what better. coaches say. Just play better and yeah. just just keep doing what you do. And But yeah. here's the thing is that everybody, I think, over the first two weeks thought that Dallas's first loss would come to against a team of the caliber of the Niners or the Eagles or the Commanders in their, con- in their division. And instead, it comes against a team that everybody thought is going to be first overall on the clock because they're going to have to tank because Kyler Murray's hurt and Josh Dobbs and all that. And and the Cardinals are, you know, are are definitely a team that you best not sleep on. I mean, this is the first time they had a they won a game. The first time they won a game this year, they had the lead at halftime all all three games. This is the first time. And look at Jonathan Gannon over there. Look at Jonathan Gannon over there. One thing that maybe the Dallas Cowboys need to their shoo, offense. Shoo, 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 shoo. That's what maybe they need. <laughs> wow, we have it. Because Rondell Moore, who is the recipient of those weird video game noises, <laughs> ran right up the Dallas defense, didn't he? Yeah. I thought you were going to say we need to take the bus there. But I'm serious, though. Ron, like, who, like, Pollard needs to be that home run hitter. And he it did have over 100 yards, yards rushing. I know. Yeah. I, you know what I mean? And and C.D. Lamb needs to be that big number one guy. And if he's out and and Pollard's getting his yards in the ground but not breaking away, who's going who's gonna to flip the field? Like Brandon Cooks, that's what he's there for. Take the top of the defense off and make big plays. Mm-hmm. Hasn't happened. Like, say, the, the ones that, that Pickett made last night in Vegas. To Austin, right? Oh, yeah. Calvin Austin kind of flipped that flipped every like the Cowboys need need some of that mm-hmm. in games like this. And we will see next up is New England. So Dak's going to have a very frustrating afternoon because that's what Bill does to quarterbacks confuses him. And that's what's coming up for Dallas before they visit San Francisco on a Sunday night. Look out and then a visit here to the Chargers next three weeks. Very interesting for the Dallas Cowboys. Again, we all thought one of the losses would come against San Francisco or Philadelphia. One of the two. They play Miami in December on Christmas Eve. Should we go to that game next week, TJ? In New England? No, it's in Dallas. It's in Dallas, man. Oh, it is. Go for it. Let's do it. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free. 